Everybody praise the Lord. If you are there, you expect expecting great miracle from the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Tonight is going to be a memorable night. Spectacular night for every one of us. For me. For you. For us all in Jesus name. Father, we bless your name. We glorify you. You're always there for us. You sent the Lord Jesus Christ and he came born in Bethlehem and given to us as your son as the sacrificial lamb on the cross of Calvary. And now you are sending him to us tonight to touch every life, to transform every life, and to do something incredible in every life in Jesus' name. We're asking that tonight you do something spectacular, something beyond the ordinary, and you save souls, heal the sick, and deliver the oppressed in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know it's done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yeah. And somebody there shouts, yeah. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, as we continue in this great GCK that tells us about the day of the power of the Lord, the day of his power. I want to assure you tonight that the power of God is here. And you will connect with that power, the power that saves, the power that heals, and the power that delivers, and the power that does the impossible, incredible, in every life, that power will work in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight, I bring the message to you, notable miracles on memorable day of the Lord's power. Notable miracles, notable miracles on the memorable day of the Lord's power. When we say notable, can I remind you of the man that was at the beautiful gate? At that beautiful gate, this man was there. She has been paralyzed, lame from the mother's womb. He had never walked. And now, this man was 40 years of age. That means that for 40 years, that man had been there, totally paralyzed, and carried by helpers, and carried by people to the gate of the temple. And on this day, that's what you call a memorable day, a never to be forgotten day, Peter and John were coming. And they were coming to the place of prayer. They had not even entered the place of prayer. They had not even given any message. And there was not any altar call yet, even at the beginning, as Peter got there, Peter told the man, he said, look on us. And the man was expecting to receive arms, to receive some pennies, and to receive some things that he will give unto him. And then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And then he held him by the hand and lifted him up and the man stood up and he began to walk and then he was even leaping and everybody saw him and they praised the Lord for him. That is a miracle, that is a, mo a memorable, notable miracle and that's what God is going to do for you tonight. Something appearing impossible, something appearing incredible, something appearing unheard of, a notable miracle of healing that all the sickness, 
all the weakness, all the stiffness in the joint, everything vanish away. And he had a notable miracle of healing. Uh, that's not only the notable miracles we have, we have notable miracle of restoration. I want to remind you of Peter. This uh, Peter, the Lord had told him, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And the Lord told him, he will deny Christ. He said, me, never. Impossible. And so a lady, a maid came and said, you must be one of them. He said, never. I've never known Jesus. He backslid. He fell. He sinned. He told a lie. A big lie. And Jesus had said, whosoever denies me before men, I will deny him before my Father who is in heaven. He denied the Lord. Another person came and said, didn't I see you in the garden? He said, me? Never. He told another lie again. And then the third time, another person came and said, even your speech betrays you. You are a follower of Jesus, a convert of Jesus, a disciple of Jesus. And the man said, no, I don't know him. He fell. He backslid. That's backsliding. When you tell the lie, when you deceive, when you go the wrong way, when you say the wrong thing, when you do not identify with Christ, and you do not live like Christ wants you to live in the public, that's the backsliding. But now, as we come to the Acts of the Apostles, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the doctors of the law, they said, now, we warn you never to speak in this name again. And the man had now been restored because he wept the tears of repentance. He was sorry for what he had done. He was sorry for what he had said. And now restoration had come. And now the joy of salvation, reunion, reconciliation with God came upon his life. And when those Pharisees and Sadducees, when they said, don't say that again, don't mention his name again, don't preach in the name of Christ again, he said, whether it be right in your presence and in the presence of God, to obey you rather than God, you see to that but we will not stop declaring the name of the Lord. That's restoration. The courage had come back. The conviction had come back. And the reality of his life now came and stood. When we say somebody backslid and the person said, I've come back, I'm restored. Notable restoration means that your life is now different and the things of the past and the things that made your face to hit the ground, all that is now gone. Now you have the conviction, now you have the courage and you stand like you ought to stand and nothing shakes that conviction again. You are now going to live like you ought to live and you are going to tell the story of Christ, what he has done in your life. Notable healing, notable restoration, notable salvation. You think, you think about Saul of Tarsus and you think he became Paul. But this Paul, he was injurious. It was terrible. He was living a life, a life of violence, a life of persecuting the believers, a life of going the opposite direction of Christ. He was anti-Christ. Not the anti-Christ that is yet to come. He was opposed to Christ. He was anti the salvation in Christ. He was defending religion he was defending trans, uh, um, tradition but now he met the lord on the way to damascus 
And, he, and the Lord said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, as he looked up, who are you, Lord? And the Lord replied, I am Jesus, whom you persecute, because what you do to my disciples, you are doing to me. What you do against my followers, you are doing to me. What you do against Stephen, you are doing that against me. And what you do against the people, my apostles, my apostles that I sent, my ambassadors that I sent, you are doing that against me. And so he said, Lord, what will I do? And the Lord said, go to Damascus. It will be shown to you what you will do. And he was praying. For those three days, he prayed until Ananas came to him. And Ananas said, brother Saul, born again, born again. A real change had come. Number one, he didn't go to the authorities in Damascus to say, I came to arrest the believers, the Christians here. Show me the houses. None of that again. That man was born again. And that's the born again we're talking about when a change happens. When there's a turning around. And when the things you plan to do, and the things you wanted to do in the evil way, your heart is changed. Your mind is changed. Your proposals are changed. Your plans are changed. And you do not go to do those things anymore. And then he stayed. He was praying. Was praying to the Lord. He never did that before. All he knew before was ceremonial law. All he knew before was tradition. All he knew before was religion. The religion of the Jews. But now... A change had come, and that change that came upon his life is what we call salvation. And for him, it is notable. Why do we say that's notable salvation? He said, the people just saw that the one who persecuted us before now preaches the gospel, the word he wants destroyed that's salvation no table and in our lives what we came for here at this crusade is no table miracle of healing amen, amen. no table miracle of restoration amen. amen no table miracle of salvation that's why we're talking on the no table miracles on memorable day of the lord's power he will do it in your life in jesus name it tells us how that happens acts chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 6 acts of the apostles chapter 3 we're looking at verse 6 it says and peter looked on him and peter said unto him look on us silver and gold abide none in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk notable miracle look at verse 16 in verse 16 it tells us how that happens and he said and his name through faith in his name has made this man whole, made this man strong, made this man healed, whom you see and know. You see him, you know him, is the one that had always been put at the gate, at the gate beautiful, yea, the face which is by him have given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And I pray today as you believe and as you connect with the Lord by faith, such miracle will happen in your life. Yeah. And the salvation will happen in your life. Not the salvation that people carry about, 
superficial, doesn't have any change, any transformation, any conviction, any real conversion in their lives, but the kind of salvation that is notable. That I used to be in darkness, I'm not in darkness anymore. I used to worship those petty, petty gods that are no gods, but now I worship the God of heaven, and I used to follow after the evil practices of the land. But now, I don't do all those things anymore because on the memorable day that I heard, repent ye and believe the gospel, I repented and turned around, and now my life is new. That kind of transforming salvation, transformation, conversion, the Lord grants unto every one of us. Give me a good and no good amen. Notable healing, notable restoration, notable salvation on the day of the grace of God in our lives. There are three things we're looking at tonight as we look at the message. Number one, number one is the happy day of the favored people when you come to the lord and you are asking that what christ did on the cross of calvary will impact on your life and then as you turn away from sin and believe on the lord jesus christ and that happens to you what a happy day happy day when jesus took my sins away he taught me how to pray and now you believe on him and all your sins are forgiven all your all the chains of sin they are broken away from your life the happy day of the favored people number two is the holy day of our faithful preparation and you want to meet the lord is the king of kings we're coming to the king you want to meet the lord is the savior from sin and you want to meet the lord is the one he loved you so much he gave his life for you he loved you so much he shared his blood so that your life will be totally transformed and your life will be ready to go up on high when he comes and it's a holy day it's a sacred day it's a special day when we have the chance to prepare prepare faithfully and i pray the lord will make this day a sacred day for you holy day for you an important day for you that you remember on that day the day of the lord sunday i gave my life to the lord it became for me a sacred special holy day of the faithful preparation number three is the hopeful day of his fulfilled promises he promised to heal the hopeful day of fulfilling that promise he promised to forgive he promised to set free if the son therefore shall make you free he shall be free indeed he'll break the yoke of sin he'll destroy all the chains all the shackles of sin away from your life in jesus name he will cleanse you he will purge you and make you as white as snow. In fact, he will make you whiter than snow. And the hope you have, the expectation you have, is that this will be that day when his promise of healing, his promise of salvation, his promise of deliverance, his promise of total restoration will take place in your life in Jesus name the hopeful day of his fulfilled promises let's come to number one number one is the happy day of the favored people favored people God shows his favor 
the favor of salvation, the favor of forgiveness. We don't merit it. It's not by merit. That's why it's his favor. And the favor of setting us free and loosening all the chains and all the cords that tied you. It tied you and you're just there. All you could do is go around that pole by which, to which you are tied. You couldn't extend your move. You were limited because you are bound because <coughs> you are tied but now he comes to lose you I said he comes to lose you and tonight will be your night in Jesus name we're looking at Proverbs chapter 28 Verse 13, how does this favor come upon us? How does this joyful time come upon us? How does this joyful event take place in our lives? It says in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. That's the word of God. He that covereth the sin, tell me. Can you tell me out aloud? How do we cover sin? Well, you understand, somebody tells a lie, and you are looking at him, and you say, is this not a lie? He has to cover that lie with another lie, a bigger lie. And somebody comes back to say, hey, you're a church man, you're a church woman. The first one was a lie. The second one is a bigger, no, I didn't tell a lie. He has to look for a third lie to cover that first and the second lie. And the people that live like that, they cover their sins. They've done one. And they cover it with, you know, believe me, I swear to God Almighty that I am righteous. And they are sworn in the name of the Lord and they are sinful and they are defiled and they are evil. They cover their sins and they bring the name of the Almighty God into it. They don't prosper in the kingdom. They don't enter into the kingdom. He that covereth his sins, covereth, covereth, covereth. It's always in the game, in the gambling of covering and covering and covering every time. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. You didn't say your amen for that one. Yeah. He that confesses, not just to confess, but and also to forsake. You are now conscious that a child of God doesn't go that direction. That a man of God, a woman of God, doesn't say such thing. Doesn't do such thing. That a real born again person who has met the Lord and he has confessed and he has forsaken his sins, he doesn't do like that anymore. That hypocrisy is all gone. Deception is all gone. Make believe all that is gone and he lives a life above board, above reproach. Today and henceforth, that is a person who received the mercy of God, but who so confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Look at the next verse and see what follows. That forgiveness, that mercy, that compassion, that turning around, that change of life. It says in verse 14, happy is the man. The fear is always a fear to sin, a fear to go back to those dirty things. I fear to, you know, come back to the devil and say, I am bad. No, I'm afraid of that. Happy 
is the man the fearest always but he that hardness is uh, it says hardness is heart shall fall into mischief i will not harden my heart god bless you say that aloud more when he tells us to repent and he tells us to turn we turn we confess our sins and we forsake confession is not enough conversion must follow transformation must follow a change must follow we confess and we forsake our sin we have the mercy of god he favors us he turns our lives around he changes us completely and now the spirit of god bears witness in our heart that we are now children of god the things i used to do i do them no more the places i used to go i go there no more the things i used to drink i drink that no more and the things i used to smoke i smoke that no more and the people you used to visit in the night you do that no more and the things you used to do in secret you do that no more you have confessed you are forsaking the sins in your life and now happy is that man i pray that the happiness of salvation will be real in every life in jesus name in acts of the apostles chapter 8 i'm reading there from verse 4 acts chapter 8 reading there from verse 4 there he tells us he said therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the world now these are the people they carried salvation everywhere they went they were in jerusalem and there was persecution that arose in jerusalem and the persecution drove them out of their houses out of their communities out of their the familiar places and now everywhere they went they didn't say when in jerusalem do as the jerusalem people do as the jews do when in rome do as the romans do when in babylon do as the babylonians do no those ones are not born again uh, they, they follow what they call a kind of uh, circumstantial gospel that when you are here you behave like this when you are there you behave like this when you are there you behave like that other way that, that's no salvation but these people they had the joy of salvation these people they had the happiness that god had given them they were favored of the lord their sins were forgiven and so everywhere they went is that same gospel that same word the word of his grace and the word of salvation is spread everywhere in your place of work as you go there you stand you're born again now in the market you stand you're born again now anywhere you find yourself you go to the village and they're worshiping the village idol you're not sure then anymore because the gospel you have here the salvation you have here the conversion you have here everywhere you go you go with that same salvation it will be so in your life in jesus name and they were told in verse 5 look at verse 5 it says then philip went down to the city of samaria and he preached christ unto them first of all about philip he was in jerusalem and in the persecution that drove him uh, to the city of samaria and what he believed when he was in jerusalem he still believed that conversion through christ 
salvation through Christ, eternal life through Christ. It is say now you are in Samaria and you have to maybe change your idea so that they don't know you and recognize you here. A real child of God who is born again. Anywhere you go, like Philip, you go to Samaria, that same conversion you carry there. That same transformation of life you carry there. That same conviction. If sin is evil in Jerusalem, in Samaria, sin is still evil. If when you want that side, sin was rejected. As you come to this side, as you come to leave in your area where they do not believe the gospel, what was seen over there in Jerusalem is still seen over here in Samaria. You're not a chameleon, you're like this, like this, like this. But you are straightforward, you are forthright, you stand for the word of God you stand for and it's a real change. That's the kind of salvation we're talking about, that's the kind of salvation we're presenting to you, that's the kind of salvation you have tonight in Jesus name. And then we're told in verse 6, in verse 6, and he and the people with one accord gave heed to the things unto unto those things which Philip spake. He told them about Christ, they gave heed. He told them to confess their sin, to forsake their sin, they gave heed. He told them to turn to the Lord and to return from their evil ways. And they, give, they gave heed with one accord. No dissenting voice and uh, nobody said, no, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is have this and have that. I don't want to have a change of life. They all gave heed to those things which Philip spake. And then hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, it tells us, it says, For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many. That's how the unclean spirits will come out today. We command in the name of Jesus, we declare in the name of Jesus, and every unclean spirit will pass out. Amen. Will come out, come out of your body, come out of your brain, come out of your life, come out of your family in Jesus' name. And then we're told that all the people were palsies, and that what name they were healed. And the same Jesus, the same name of Jesus that did it at that time, that same name is still working wonders today. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. That forever name, that forever power, that forever anointing, that forever change making will happen in your life tonight in jesus name and then we're told in verse 8 look at verse 8 it says and there was great joy happiness and there was great joy excitement and there was great joy in that city salvation brings joy healing brings joy transformation of life brings joy what i could not do before what I could not sustain before, and the clean life I could not live before, now grace has come, favor has come, and now you are able to live that new life. You are able to live that changed life. You are able to live that transformed life. You'll be so happy. I didn't know I could, you know, stand upright. I went to the market, things are different now. I went to the office, things are different now. That's an old, uh, you know, old uh, friend, we're called boyfriend, girlfriend, came and I was able to say no. Think about that. I never knew I could say no to him. I never knew I could say no to her. The joy, the happiness of a changed life that comes upon our lives. Joy in that city tonight, joy over there yeah. in your soul, yeah. in your spirit, yeah. in your life. Joy, 
joy, the joy and the happiness of salvation tonight in Jesus' name. Number two, we're looking at the holy day of faithful preparation. We need to prepare. You're going to meet with the Lord. You need to prepare. You're going to have your sins forgiven. You need to prepare. You're going to have a new life from the Lord. You need to prepare. You, you're going to have the benefit of Calvary. What he did for us on the cross of Calvary. We have to prepare. And it's a special day. It's a sacred day. It's a holy day of a faithful preparation. We're looking at, uh, uh, looking at Isaiah chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 15. Isaiah chapter 1, reading from verse 15. And when ye spread your hands, I will, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear your hands are full of blood. That's God saying that when the people prayed and when they fasted, you will not hear. When they read their prayer from a book, you will not hear. And when they, you know, do some other things and sweat while praying, that you will not hear. We learn a lesson from that. It's not the shouting that makes the prayer heard. We learn something from that. It's not because I fall down, I roll on the ground. I'm so serious and fanatical. That's not how prayer is answered. And it is not by, you know, reading something. Other people are preaching this now. And they say, if you read this three times, seven times, your prayer will be answered. That's not why God answers prayer. If your hands are full of blood, are you not committing abortion? If your hands are full of blood, are you not taking lives? If your hands are full of blood, are you not hurting yourself, killing yourself, destroying yourself? If your hands are full of blood, if you have any participation in the destroy, destruction of other people's lives, in the abortion being committed, your hands are full of blood. And it says, forget it until you repent, until you feel sorry for what you have done. And you say, I'm sorry I did that. I'm sorry I was part of that. I'm sorry I went that direction. I'm sorry I do not have the power to create life. And then I use my prerogative to take life. I'm sorry. If your hands are still full of blood, you have to repent. It's not just I pray, I pray, I pray, I raise up my hand. Yes, it's good to pray. It's good to raise up your hand, but you must repent. And as you repent, God will have mercy on you. Amen. I said God will have mercy on you. Amen. Your hands are full of blood. Do you uh, make blood come out of your body and then you give it to whoever because you're in a covenant? And that covenant of the devil that brings blood out of you and blood out of her and blood out of him. If you are like that, God doesn't answer the prayer of the people whose hands are defiled by blood. But the preparation we make as we want to have the goodness of the Lord in our lives. We want to have the real salvation and the real um, transformation that puts our names in the book of life in heaven. The preparation is to repent, to return from those evil things that we have done. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, it tells us, wash and make yourself clean. How do we do that? The blood of Jesus has been shed for you because of what you did. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us. Not only to forgive, to also cleanse us. Those two things must go together. He does not forgive you and then give you license. Go and sin again and come back. And then go and sin again and come back. And then go and sin again and come back. No. 
we confess and we forsake and he gives us mercy and he gives us forgiveness and he gives us conversion and that conversion makes us clean the lord will clean you up and then he says uh, take it uh, uh, but put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes cease to do evil that's repentance that's the preparation we make we stop doing evil he knows we can stop if we want to stop he knows we can change when Christ comes into our lives he knows that if we really mean to serve the Lord a change can happen that's why he says cease to do evil look at verse 17 in verse 17 learn to do well learn to do well and that's what happened to us when i became born again there are a lot of things i didn't know when i became born again there were a lot of you know little 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 things there i would even do some of those things when i knew that the sin will carry punishment i knew and even the person to do to carry out the punishment was right there and i knew that if he discovered even if he did not discover he'll say if you were here before and you took this only once to come and take and i'll go for the first time and take the first and then he'll be standing there to look at the people that are just coming now i'll see him right there and then i'll go there you're just coming yes sir it's late for you to come now i'm going to be i knew he would do that and i give him my hand and he walks it one two three four i do it like that i go my way i take the second i knew it was going to be punishment and yet i did it and there are people like that the scene they come back and even when they know that scene carries punishment they will still do it again but thank god on a memorable day i came before the lord and i said enough of those evil things enough of repeating things that were not right even the things that i knew will carry punishment and now learn to do well i pray the good thing that happened to me will happen to you the good change that took place in my life will happen to you in jesus name but you know i so cleverly did what i did especially in my school days that our principal militant military man never knew that i could do such a thing but now i became born again somebody help me shout born again and uh, then i went to see a principal and i said sir i was oh he said mr come you come in you know i was always a good boy before him he didn't know i was a big zero a big pretender a big hypocrite and i now began to tell him the things i did using a signature of the signature of principle the things i did that were wrong and he was always there vigilant i said now my heart is changed my life is transformed and the things i used to do i cannot do them anymore who oh, you said mr kumui because i was now you know a teacher in the school he said mr kumui we all, we all know you all students teachers principal everyone we all know you you are being a good man i said no sir no sir i covered it up so much that none of you could tell but it's now it's now the grace of god brings the goodness in my life what god has done for me he will do for you because you see that is how the change 
really comes and he says learn to do well seek justice relieve the oppressed and he said judge the fatherless and plead for the widow you know those my days long ago before this favor came on me and before I made the right preparation to be able to receive the salvation of the Lord. Uh, there were some of um, students, my classmates, very strong and very, you know, powerful. And it could lick you up and put your back to the wall in any fight. You don't even try to fight for them. But I was so bad, so wicked, that when they were sick, and I knew uh -huh, the, the young man is sick now, he's weak. In the time of his sickness and weakness, is then I will torture him to me, and he couldn't do anything he was so weak at that time i was waiting for that time that's how bad i was but i made preparation i said lord all that violence all that evil no more in your life from tonight no more yeah. that's why he now says in verse 18 in verse 18 he says come now and let us reason together says the lord though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool the lord will cleanse you the Lord will purge you and the Lord will transform your life and take every evil sin away from you in Jesus name that's a holy day that's a sacred day that's a special day when the forgiveness and the cleansing and the freedom from the Lord comes upon your life it's coming tonight I said he's coming tonight. Look at point number three now. Point number three is the hopeful day of his fulfilled promises. He has promised he'll forgive and this is the hopeful day that he will fulfill that promise of forgiveness. He has promised to set you free. This is that day the hopeful day of his fulfilled promise. He has promised that he will turn your life around for the better. And this is the day he will turn your life around for the better. That now he guides you. Now he directs you. Now he instructs you the way you should go. Because now you are totally and completely giving unto the Lord that's why he now comes and he says he wants to fulfill his will, his word, his promise in your life. The hopeful day of his fulfilled promises in Luke chapter 1. Reading from verse 70. Luke chapter 1 verse 70. As he speak by the mouth of his holy prophets which have been since the world began then he tells us in verse 71 it says that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us praise the lord i said praise the lord he says it will save us from sin, yes. It will save us even from the hands of the people that make themselves our enemies. It will save you completely. And it will save us from all the things that the people of the world who hate us, that they can do nothing will hurt you anymore look at verse 72 in verse 72 it says to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to also remember his holy covenant he's made a covenant with our fathers 
Now through Jesus Christ, he makes a new covenant. And in that new covenant, it says, I'll forgive and forget the iniquity. New covenant. And that is the promise he wants to fulfill in your life. That every sin you have committed, every evil you have done, he'll forgive you tonight. And now he says, I will write my law in their heart. That I didn't know that was wrong. You cannot say that anymore now when you come to the Lord. He writes his word. He writes his commandment. He writes his intention. What he wants in your life, he writes that in your heart. And he says, they will not depart from me anymore. That's the only covenant, and that's the new covenant is making with us. Look at 73. Verse 73, it tells us the oath which he swear unto our father Abraham. Look at verse 74. Verse 74, that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies we might serve him without fear without fear without fear <laughs> you know there are people that do things not because they want to they are afraid and i could tell you a number of a number of people they do this they do this they do that because of fear somebody carries a big whip behind them if you don't do that thing, this is what will do unto you, fear. You know what fear is? It's feeling exaggerated above reality. You know the reality. That fellow uh, says he'll do this, he'll do that. He cannot, he cannot. And because of the threatening, uh, then there's fear. And the fear is how you feel. You feel you're exalting, you're feeling, feeling exaggerated above reality uh, you know there are people they want the fellowship of this man the friendship of this man and they want her to be a friend to this man that man is injurious that man will misuse your body and then throw you away and get another one but because they have fellowship exalted above their redemption Fellowship exalted above redemption. They don't think about, about the redemption. They don't think if I say no to this man and I say yes to the Messiah, I say yes to Christ, my Savior, I will be redeemed. I'll have redemption. I'll go to heaven. But the, the fellowship, the friendship they have with that man, with that woman, with that girlfriend so-called, boyfriend so-called, the fellowship they have with him, with her, is so much that they exalt that above their redemption. You'll exalt your redemption today. I'd say to exalt your redemption today. And then uh, there, is the, there are the people that uh, they make favor to be elevated above restoration. You were born again before. You were a child of God before. You knew what it meant to have salvation. And then uh, one man in the office, one man in your community, one man face me and face your house, give you some favor and has been giving you finance and has been giving you this and that. Now you are backsliding. But there's restoration waiting for you. But fear is what hinders people. What's fear? Favor elevated above restoration restoration the lord will restore you today and when you count your restoration above any finance above any favor that anybody is trying to show you you know the friendship if i don't uh, bend to him he'll not be my friend anymore okay it's your friend but he will not allow you to do what God wants you to do. Well, the fellow was the prophet of that kind of friendship. 
jettison that friendship. Throw away that friendship. And come and have the Lord give you of the restoration he wants to give you. You know what fear is? It's familiarity. Endangering advocates reconciliation. Our advocate is Christ. We have an advocate, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And you are so familiar with the advocate. Uh, you want to do something evil? Uh, let's, let's do it. I have an advocate. He'll plead for me, I'll be all right. I need to steal this now. You don't need to steal. He'll provide for all you. I'll steal it. God will forgive me. And then you take, you're so familiar with the advocate. It's like you have a lawyer. And a lawyer defended you and got you out of the net, out of the judgment. And then you say, thank you, advocate. Will you always be my advocate? Yes. I volunteer to be always your advocate. The following day, you want to steal a bigger amount than the one they wanted to incarcerate you for. And then you say, advocate, come, come. I've done it again. Uh, how could you do that? Well, you are my advocate now. And then you keep on doing that and doing that and doing that. You know, the people that invite you to sin, let's do it. God is merciful. God is a good God. He will forgive us. If anybody did that to you and always did what you, what will hurt you and you say I know you'll forgive me okay I forgive you and then you go the following day you do that same thing again you become so familiar with the advocate it endangers your reconciliation with God but when you come you're sorry for what you've done. Not you're sinning and sinning and sinning and saying, I know he will forgive. No, we come to the Lord. He delivers us from fear. He delivers us from the familiarity that endangers the advocate's reconciliation. What's fear? Fear is, uh, you know, the frequent experiment that we conduct that is against restitution. The frequent excuses against restitution. You know restitution? You know when you faint, I just told you what I did, and I you know, made restitution, my conscience became clear, and I could stand before the principal, before anybody, because I made right my way. But you're stolen something, and you've heard about Zacchaeus, for my good, I give to the poor. If I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore fourfold. But fear frequent excuses against restitution. If I do it, they will now think I had not been a good person. My friend, come out true. Were you a good person? If I confess that, if I make restitution for that, they will say I have been a hypocrite. Okay, what were you? Were you not a hypocrite when you were doing things that you didn't want people to know and you were proving that I am holy, holy, but you are not holy? Were you not a hypocrite? If I do that, it will lessen my self-esteem before people. The frequent excuses against restitution. Did you have any self-esteem? May the Lord deliver us from all fear in Jesus' name. Amen. You know the people that are giving those excuses, they cannot make right this one. They cannot make right that one. They want to look good, good, good in the presence of people on the final day. All those sins are following after you. All those excuses are following after you. And you, but you appear before the great judge of heaven. And the books are opened. And everything you have been saying, I can't talk about that. I can't confess that. I am, you know, everybody knows I'm too holy. I'm too righteous to do that. But you are doing it. And now you come before the judge of the whole earth. And they read everything before the whole world. And everybody will know everybody will hear what you have been doing 
and now there's no chance to prepare there's no chance to make any restitution there's no time to repent and you are lost and lost forever is it not better to get this thing to reject all those fears and say lord i come i want to confess what i've done i want to confess what i have been and now i want the mercy of god the salvation of the lord and the lord will save you in jesus name now he tells us in verse 75 that when he has delivered us from fear he says now that we would live in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives that's what salvation does that now we go out and we live in holiness what's it to be holy what the holiness you're humble without being haughty humble without being haughty you know, those are the people that follow the lord all these religious people who are so proud and pompous and haughty and that's not salvation holiness before the lord means that you are humble and not haughty oh you are obedient and you are not obstinate obedient and not obstinate you see the people who don't care for holiness they say okay i'm doing that thing and they have discovered i'm the one doing it they have discovered that's the way i'm okay since they have known then they become obstinate you see me you detect i'm the one all right i will still do it they become obstinate there's no holiness there those people are just serving themselves they are not serving uh, the lord holiness means that we're obedient we're not obstinate holiness means hell we're loyal we're not lawless loyal not lawless as the lord touches your life and as he turns your life around and as he saves you you're not loyal to the lord and the lord is everywhere the lord is in the market the lord is in the office the lord is in that secret place anywhere you are you remain loyal to him not lawless i you are innocent not injurious you know saul he was injurious that was he said before his conversion before he actually knew the lord he was injurious he harmed people physically harmed people emotionally harmed people spiritually he made them backslide he made them go against christ but now he became innocent of that kind of evil thing because he was now a real child of god all those things of the past everything are totally gone then new nature not negligent you are not negligent of the word of god of the commandment of God of the salvation of God but <coughs> your new na new nature if any man be in Christ is a new creature you'll be a new creature in Jesus name you are enabled <coughs> you are not ensnared you see there are people they put their hands in something and they hook their hands there they want to pull it out uh -uh. you cannot come out again and snared until christ comes and i'll enable you and all those things that ensnared your life everything will vanish in jesus name that's what it means to be holy you're sincere now and you are not scornful you are not scornful you don't hear the words 
that calls you to repentance, and then say, what are they saying? Am I the only one doing that here? Am I the only one that has ever done that? And you seen God, a God that will forgive? Uh-huh. You're familiar now with the advocate. Or the advocate, he will forgive. So let me go ahead and do it. I will, I will change later. Let me go and do it. They are ensnared. But now, as you come, and he delivers you from the hand of your enemy, that you now serve God without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of your life. You are steadfast. You are not sinning secretly. You are steadfast. You are not sinning secretly. Our church people are not here. Okay, let's do it quickly until uh, before uh, you know, our church members come. <laughs> that one is a secret sinner. Let's, let's take it now and let's see how to adjust everything so they will not know. That's a secret sinner, but a person who had been saved by the Lord, delivered by the Lord, he is steadfast in the Lord and is not sinning secretly. That's what the Lord wants to do for you. And the Lord will do it tonight. I said the Lord will do it tonight. You have seen the picture of your own life. And you have seen that this is what it means when we have that notable miracle. Notable miracle of salvation. Notable miracle of restoration. And then will follow notable miracle of healing. You will do it today. I said you will do it today. This is the real experience of salvation, of conversion, of returning totally unto the Lord. It's now your turn. And it's now your turn to say, Lord, here am I. It will happen. That good thing will happen to you. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. This is the moment of our preparation, the moment to repent, the moment to turn unto the Lord, the moment to confess and forsake all the evil things, sinful things we've discovered in our heart, in our life. The things we've done openly, the things we've done privately, the things we've done secretly. Tell the Lord and say, Lord, I want your forgiveness. I want the freedom. I want the salvation. The salvation of the Lord that brings real transformation. I said, it's about and eyes are closed. You want this forgiveness and freedom from the Lord. Wherever you are, God bless you there. Raise up your hand. Genuine salvation, real salvation, definite salvation, definite forgiveness, a definite cleansing from the Lord. Thank you very much, raise up that hand. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up wherever you are. Standing up, standing up, standing up for Jesus, standing up for real, definite experience. No more hypocrisy. No more falling and rising. No more denying of Christ. And no more just religious, religious, religious. But real salvation from the Lord. God bless you there as you are standing up. As you are standing up, please tell the Lord. Confess before the Lord and say, Lord, I've been coming before, but now I really come. I've been praying before, Lord, I really pray. I've been confessing and forsaking before, but my whole heart was not there. Lord, my heart is really there. Because I want that notable salvation, that notable transformation, that notable restoration tell the Lord
In Jesus' name we pray. Give me a better amen over there. <clears throat> keep up that hand. And keep on standing up. Online. Anywhere you are. You've heard the word of God. And you see that this is the day of your notable salvation. We're praying together now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you know all hearts. You know the disposition of the heart. You know the sincerity of the heart. You know the sincere desire of this biblical salvation. I pray, Lord, you grant all your people that sincere heart to repent, to turn away from sin, and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray, Lord, you forgive them definitely. You set them free supernaturally. And I pray the Spirit of God will bear witness in their hearts. They are now children of God. Confirm, affirm that salvation in their hearts in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. Keep on standing. Our counselors are coming there. The choristers, members of the choir, help us at this time. Ushers, counselor, everyone, help us at this time so that we can capture the names <coughs> in good time. Our officiating minister tonight will come and lead us in this counseling period before I come back to pray for the notable healing and deliverance. Cancer us, please. I want you to please take note of where the decision makers are and reach out to them. Let's ensure those at the language section are also taken care of. And the people at the far back, counselors that are assigned to that place, please reach out to them towards the gate let counselors be there too all over the camp even at the overflow at the campground please let the counselors there attend to those who have made decision get their names their phone numbers and everything please let's have full detail and let us write in such a way that is readable and let's have correct address now that by the grace of God you have been made a new creature notable miracle of salvation have taken place you will not tell lies anymore you give us your true address and complete phone number and for the online brethren that made decision for Christ, those who are watching online and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message, this evening there is a link gckhq.org slash connect below your prayer or below the instrument you are using visit it and fill out the form so we can assist you in your new work with Christ. Also, those who listen over the radio, in all the states where you are, you listen to the message over the radio or you watched over the television, and you just gave your life made edition for Christ, please send your name 
to this phone number or through SMS or WhatsApp. The phone number is plus 234-915-444-9263. I take it again, plus 234-915-444-9263. Six three, all the people that listened over the radio, watched on television. Please send your name, your details, your phone number to that phone number that I've just called. I will be reaching out to you, so I'll be able to send some material that will help you to continue in your newfound faith. Also, I want to remind all that gave their life to Christ from Thursday to today that there is going to be a special lunch hour fellowship with Jesus under that pavilion by 3 p.m. tomorrow, lunch hour with Jesus under the cover over there. And that is 3 p.m. tomorrow. Be here. Those who gave your life on Thursday, gave your life to Christ on Friday, Saturday, and tonight. Please be here by 3 p.m. Please, if cancerous have not gotten to where you are, please indicate. Cancerous, please, let's ensure that nobody is left out. Get to them. Get their details. If they can write, let them fill the form and return to you. And you go through. And then you hand them the Converse package. They will give you the Converse package that contains materials that will help you in your newfound faith. Also, there is going to be Believer's Banquet on Sunday Third of November for all converts all over in our regions and various regional headquarters and some group headquarters that are far from the region headquarters by 4 p.m. Sunday, November 3rd. And also all over the world, the same believers' banquet we hold for all converts who gave their lives in all the locations all over the world. And also for those who gave their life online, also there is going to be believers' banquet with you. Please, they have not attended to you. Please. Cancer us, get to them. They have not attended to you, please indicate by raising your hand so that they will get to you. And if they have taken your details, they ought to hand over the pastor's package, the converse package to you, containing pastor's letter that will help you to stand. And also there are other Christian materials and pastor's book, a gift for you that will help you to stand. So those who gave their life to Christ, please let the counselors meet with you. Give them full detail. Counselors, please, let's be fast. And after counseling, please remain where you are so that you'll be able to identify, the, don't come back, choir, anywhere, all counselors remain in the congregation, please. Remain in the congregation so that the people, after the miracle prayer, you'll be able to help them and identify with them and bring them to where they can give their testimony. From our far left over here, if you have finished, please, can I see the flag? Supervisor, if they are finished. Okay, I see from the back over there. From the front here, 
If you have finished counseling in your own section, please raise the flag. Okay, in the language section, they are true. Okay, in the front here, I can see you are true. Over there. Okay, at the very far back, I think we are true and we are ready tonight. There is a miracle for you. As a man of God, we come up, I want to tell you, you will never carry your problem away. Be on your feet as we welcome the man of God. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Carry go. Amen. Miracle. Amen. Healing. Amen. Deliverance. Amen. Notable miracle of healing for you in Jesus' name. Amen. You remember the man I spoke about in the Bible? He was at that gate. They carried him there. He had never seen Peter before or John before. He had never even had any testimony of miracle. But that day, his miracle came. Today, your miracle has come. We mention the name of Jesus and the name and faith in that name has made this man strong, made him whole through faith in the name of Jesus. And that name has never lost its power. You need a notable miracle, notable healing, notable deliverance. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. And lay your hand in the place where you have the challenge. When you hear the name of Jesus, your miracle has arrived. Yeah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, yeah. we come before you, God of mercy, God of love, God of compassion. We're asking, touch heal everyone in Jesus name Amen. everywhere here to the right to the left to the center online everywhere notable miracle of healing in Jesus name Amen. open those blind eyes loose the dumb tongues take the swelling away yeah. heal the paralysis yeah. take away the terminal disease cancer or anything from every life in Jesus name yeah. the name of Jesus that name that can never fail I send forth your healing to you right now yeah. your natural miracle to you right now and the power of the Lord touch you there. Amen. Let there be a demonstration of power in your life. Amen. Performance of miracle in your life. Amen. A confirmation of the notable healing, observable healing, visible healing in your life right now in Jesus' name. Amen. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. It's done. Check up. You see the miracle there.